Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dapp University. So in this video, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes of one of my latest blockchain projects, all right? This is my uh, latest blockchain developer job as a freelancer, okay? So I wanna explain, you know, what I'm working on with this project, give you my thought process um, behind the problems that I have to solve and, you know, how I'm gonna solve them. All right, so before we get into that, if you're new around here, like I said, I'm Gregory from Dapp University. On this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain developer. So if that's something that sounds good to you, click the like button down below and click subscribe, all right? That really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to become blockchain developers. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about this project, all right? Um, I wanna talk about, you know, my role in the project, the problems that I have to solve, and my thought process for solving them. Okay. So I'm going to anonymize, you know, really specific details about the app to not reveal any information about the client, but I'll explain to you, you know, how it works, you know, why they need to use the blockchain and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So what does the app do? Like, why do they want to use the blockchain? Okay. So essentially, um, this is an app that a lot of different businesses are going to use. Okay. And these businesses don't necessarily trust one another to provide accurate information about like when events happened. Um, and you know, about the integrity of the data that they give one another. All right. Um, and this is a perfect reason to use the blockchain. So I'll, uh, actually put this up here on my screen. All right. So trustless you know, businesses don't trust one another. All right. And then also, sorry, I'll hide this. <laughs> so trustless. And then also, um, let's see here if I can do this. Um, it's a shared system, all right? Basically, a core part of this blockchain infrastructure is going to be some smart contracts that live on the blockchain uh, that handle these transactions between these businesses. And, you know, businesses don't want to, you know, host this on their own servers. They want to put it on the blockchain. Um, like I said, they don't want to trust each other. And then also it, it, it uh, eliminates the need to have infrastructure that they share and maintain, okay? It's just the, on the public network itself. Okay, so, you know, what does the app actually do? Uh, well, I'll kind of draw you a diagram here um, because, you know, I haven't written the code for this app yet. I'm working on it right now. It's one of the reasons I'm making this video is try to help you all um, and kind of take you behind the scenes of my thought process about how I would build something like this. Um, because my role on this really is building the entire thing. You know, when I work on freelance projects, sometimes I'm like a specialist. I have a very specific role um, in the context of another team who's doing other things. Uh, but in this case, I'm kind of in charge of the entire project and maybe I'll like hire some people to do specific parts of it. But really, it's me solving the entire thing and uh, kind of seeing it through point A to Z, from, from A to Z. All right, so uh, I'll explain how it works. So essentially, let's look at the use case. So um, there's you know, these businesses, which are users. <laughs> uh, this is a kind of a poor drawing of a user, but you get the idea, all right? It's users. And these users need to submit uh, data. All right, submit data like this. <laughs> and then that data is going to go to the blockchain. <laughs> all right, and these are, this is a pretty large uh, payload of data all at one time. And you know these businesses need to verify that the data was submitted at a certain time, that that time never changed, that the data that was submitted in the transaction never changed, and they need to be able to read that data from anywhere, at any time, anyone can do it, all right? That's a part of this group, okay? So any of these businesses can do this. Um, so here's, here's a few problems, all right? These, this data actually is contained in files because it's very large data, okay? So uh, I'll put that here on my screen. So I'll talk about some problems associated with this and how we solved it, all right? So files. Um, there's a big problem here. You know, you don't want to just put files on the blockchain. <laughs> it's, it's too big. The gas cost, if you're using something like Ethereum, it's going to be way too high. It costs money to put information on the blockchain, and um, a file is way too big. So essentially, you have to store the file somewhere else and then store a reference to that file on the blockchain with a smart contract or something like that. So in this case, um, we decided to use IPFS, right? It's a decentralized file storage system, IPFS. I've got several uh, tutorials on my channel that teach you how to build uh, projects with IPFS and upload files. So I'm doing the same kinds of things on this project that I show you on this channel. Um, so the file goes here on IPFS, all right? And instead of, um, you know, just getting the file hashed back from IPFS, it goes on the blockchain and a record of that file gets stored there inside of a transaction with a signature about who did it. 
and also, um, you know, a timestamp that it happened at a certain time. And then we can fetch information from the smart contract that the file is recorded, where it is on IPFS, and then they can read it off. And that's going to allow them to, you know, do this in a decentralized way. Okay. So um, there's one other big problem. These files have a sensitive information inside of them. You don't want someone to be able to just go onto IPFS if they had the hash and, you know, just read this file off there because then they could see all the information inside of it. So let's just take an image, for example. Um, let's say, you know, you put your driver's license or something like that uh, on IPFS. You wouldn't want somebody who had the, had the hash, the ID of that file, to just be able to go read it and then see your driver's license and all your personal information on it. I'm not using driver's licenses in this case. I'm just, you know, using that as an example. So as a sensitive file. So what we do with the file is essentially encrypt it before it goes on IPFS, right? So file gets encrypted, goes on IPFS, hash comes back, goes on the blockchain, and then they can read all that information back. So um, this encryption process involves a shared key, which they can use to encrypt the files when they go on. They come back. Uh, they can use a similar key to uh, read the file. And if you don't have the key, you can't read the file, okay? So this gives them uh, all the benefits they need uh, inside the system. Like I said, it is a, a trustless system, all right? Businesses don't have to trust one another in order to use this, and it's a shared system. They don't have to uh, share the cost of maintaining it. The smart contracts are on a public network, and all the files get stored on something like IPFS. Okay? And maybe we'll use a different distributed file storage mechanism at some point in time, but that's the one that we're going to start with and experiment and this whole project is uh, kind of a big experiment because their industry is ripe for disruption with something like this in blockchain. This is a similar kind of uh, workflow that happens all the time in their industry, and they're experimenting, hoping that they can be uh, some of the first to uh, solve this problem. Okay, and and you know you know copy and paste this over to other businesses and actually grow it and scale it and things like that. So um, yeah, that's sort of my thought process. That's how this works. Again, guys, this is something that honestly, like if you all took the tutorials on my channel, uh, the things I teach you inside my blockchain developer bootcamp, you could probably build something like this um, with a lot of practice, right? This is not an incredibly complex app, right? It's honestly big enough for one developer to do all by themselves um, with enough time and enough experience. Um, and you could work one-on-one -on -one with a client just like I'm doing in this scenario uh, to create something like this. You know, a lot of times, clients are trying things out um, with blockchain technology. And this is a way for you to do it for something that wouldn't necessarily uh, have a huge risk associated with it, right? We're not talking about massive cryptocurrency funds getting lost uh, if something goes wrong in the system. Um, this is just uh, something to, you know, kind of try. So I uh, hope that's helpful, all right? I hope you all uh, like this. That's an overview of how this project's gonna play out. If you all are interested in becoming a client, you know, working on a project like this, just, you know, email me down below. My email address is in the video description, gregory at dappuniversity.com. And, you know, if you wanna learn more about how to become a blockchain developer, as always, subscribe to the channel, click the like button down below, and uh, you can join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.